Good morning and welcome to a live broadcast of the Sunday morning worship service at Peace Lutheran Church in McCook, Nebraska. Today, November 12, 2023, is the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Our worship this morning will be led by Pastor Lonnie Felcher. He will also be given the sermon. The congregation will sing the opening hymn 490 entitled, Jesus Loves, the Victory Wins. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Amos chapter 5 verses 18 through 24. The Epistle lesson is taken from 1 Thess Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel is taken from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. We praise, we are pleased that you join us and praise us that our almighty, all-loving Lord, may the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless this worship this morning.
Good morning. Welcome to worship on this glorious day that God has given us. As we gather in God's house this morning, uh, we will be following the order of worship divine service. Setting one is listed in your hymnals on page 151 or is presented on the screens before you. And as we gather, as we begin our worship this day, we begin with our opening hymn, Jesus Lives, the Victories Won. I invite you to please stand. We begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak responsibly half verse by half verse the entry for today. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for her where she may lay her young. How lovely is your dwelling place. Behold our shield, O God. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. O Lord of hosts, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son to lead home his bride, the church, that with all the company of the redeemed, we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading for this Sunday is from Amos chapter 5. The people of Israel are living under the delusion that their prosperity is a sign of God's approval and that despite their acts of injustice and idolatry, their going through the motions of worship will keep him satisfied. We read, Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall, and a serpent bit him. It is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. <clears throat> Christians grieve over the death of loved ones, but not as those who have no hope. The death and resurrection of Jesus and the victory over death we have in him gives us a living hope that we will all be together once more. We read, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep that you may not grieve as others do, who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As a bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. 
But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated. At this time, I invite the children to come forward for a children's message. Good morning. Good job, you guys. <gasps> there he is. <laughs> Good job. I have a question for you guys. How many of you know how to play hide and seek? Do you know how to play hide and seek? Thanks for raising your hands. Isn't that a fun game? There's something that I really like about that, guy, that game, and the same thing that I really like, I also don't like so much. That bracelet. Oh, that is a nice bracelet. Ready or not, here I come. When I'm the one counting, I love to say that. And the louder the better. When I'm the one hiding, I don't like to hear that so much, because a lot of times I'm not ready. And when the person looks, if I'm not hiding good enough, I'm out. They get me right away. In the Bible reading today, well, Jesus' teaching is kind of teaching his disciples, you know, there's going to be a time when I'm going to say, ready or not, here I come. Some of the people in his story were ready and some weren't. He talked about a bridegroom coming to the wedding. They're getting ready to have the big wedding and there's, there's some ladies that are waiting for him and, and they're gonna lead him into the wedding. And they have lamps that are kind of like this one. They look kind of like that. You put oil in here, probably olive oil, and they'd put something in here kind of like maybe a piece of string or a rope or maybe just a piece of a weed. And they would light it, and that would be their lamp. They didn't have flashlights in those days, so they, they would have a lamp. And as long as they kept oil in there, the lamp would stay running. Well, he didn't come, and he didn't come, and he didn't come, and pretty soon they fell asleep. And some of them, when they finally said, here he comes, get ready, some of them put some more oil into that lamp, and they could go. And the other said, uh-oh, we didn't bring any. We're not ready. There's the ready or not. He came anyway. You know, <laughs> we, have, we have candles here, and you know, they kind of work the same way. They've got this kind of oil that you put in them, and, and as long as those candles are full of this, they'll stay lit. But do you suppose if we left those lit all the way to midnight? water? Well, this is an oil. It looks like water, but it's kind of an oil. If, they, if we left those on all day and all night, what do you think would happen? they would run out and it'd get dark. It, so, so Jesus' story, Teddy, where are you going? Was about being ready to enter into heaven. But, does, does Jesus really want us to get one of these to go into heaven? What is, he, what, is he, what is he talking about? He says, fill up your lamp, make sure you're ready. What, is, what do you think? If it's not this, what is it? It is, what does Jesus want? If, if we don't need that to get into heaven, what do we need? We need to pray. Who do we pray to? We pray to him, right? He's saying we need him. He just gave this as a picture. Come here, Teddy. Come on. Come here. Did you know Jesus loves you? Yeah. And he lives in your heart, right? So Jesus is saying by this story that when he lives in your heart, you're like that lamp. You light up all around you. Is that a pretty good deal? 
Thank you. Thanks for telling me that. Yes? Um, What's up, Talon? Can we just put her hands on my fingernails? Oh, let me see. Are you okay? Oh, it was probably an accident. That cast is a hard thing, though, isn't it? I'm glad you, you I think you'd be okay? Yeah. Good job. So the main thing I want you to know, that Jesus loves you, and he lives in your heart, right? Yeah. Do you die in one of those things? Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. You know that, and when you hear that, you get filled back up. And when you come next week, I'll tell you the same thing. Jesus loves you. He lives in your heart. He died in a cross for you, and we'll get filled back up. So what he's saying is keep hearing his word. Is that a pretty good thing that we get to hear him? Yeah. And it's a pretty good thing we get to talk to him too, isn't it? Just like Emmett said. He threw that, didn't he? That's okay. I'll get it later. Should we pray? Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much that these guys are here. And, and Lord, we also thank you that, that they know you, but especially that you know them, as you say in your word, as they grow bigger and taller. As they grow bigger and taller, Lord, help us as a church to help mom and dad and grandma and grandpa to help them grow bigger and taller in the faith as well. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good job, you guys. What you have on your finger? And as the kids head back, we continue with our hymn of the day.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The things in which Jesus speaks today are part of a response uh, to the disciples asking him a question, actually a couple of questions. They asked him, when will the temple of Jerusalem be left having no stone upon another? And perhaps a, a more pertinent question for us today, they asked him, what will be the sign of your coming and the sign of the close of the age? So Jesus taught them. And he started um, by teaching the disciples while well, he warned them, saying many will come in his name, saying that I am the Christ, but don't be fooled by them. Many people will listen to them, for they will speak of what sinful man's itching ears want to hear. They will put themselves in the place of Christ, asserting that, well, that he acknowledges and approves this or that sin, and many will believe and follow them. But as for you, stay the course, abide in his teaching. And Jesus went on, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. There will be famines and earthquakes. Nations will indeed rise against nation. But then he adds, don't be alarmed for these things must take place. I remember the day the Twin Towers fell. I couldn't turn it off. I had to hear every newscast, every detail. I had to hear every opinion. I was consumed by it. But here we are. We're still living. We're still worshiping him whose time was not yet. That day was not his time. Finally, I had to tell myself not to be so distracted or stalled out by the things that filled the news. But in light of them, be wise as serpents and gentle as doves and be about the work of the Lord. I had to remind myself that it was God himself, second person of the Holy Trinity, who had admonished his disciples saying, don't be alarmed about these things. And I figure if he's the one that says, don't be alarmed, it's good enough for me. Today, Jesus encourages that despite these things, there is still time, so don't waste it. Don't overfill ourselves with the things of the news. Be, be aware, but be filled with overflowing to the words of the Bible. Make the best of the time he has given. In these things, Jesus admonishes his disciples to be filled with his teachings, that they might also fill the people with his teachings, so that they also might not despair or be led astray, but that those who would be prepared to watch for his coming can be prepared to watch for his coming. In these things, I hear Jesus encouraging us to watch the sky, to watch the sky to not be fearful, but to look for his return with hopeful anticipation. The way our readings are laid out today, the way they are presented, sorry, I have a drippy nose. The way our readings are presented today, I, I see Jesus' parable as, as a focal point, the, the kind of the hinge pin, you might say, of our Old Testament and our epistle reading. For as he teaches his disciples about that day, that he, he makes it clear, ready or not, here I come. He encourages and he warns that some aren't going to be ready, don't want to be ready, and that day will be darkness and judgment. Well, uh, for others, it will be a day of joy um, never experienced on earth since the day Adam ate the fruit. Jesus' parable talks about two groups of people who are looking, they're both looking for the day of the Lord. For some, that day will be a day as described by the prophet Amos. And some will be, um, it will be a day like that described by Paul. For as Amos described, it will be a day of darkness and gloom, a day of woe. For in the time of Amos, the Lord's judgment upon the nation of Israel was at hand. In their time and then in future time, um, as was pointed out in Bible class, the Assyrians were coming from the north as God's judgment upon his people. For many am among them had openly abandoned God's covenant of grace. 
And just like every person throughout history who turns their back on God to follow their own rules, their justice was lacking and their humility before God was gone from them. They deliberately and openly sinned thinking that they could get away with it. They figured if they could coerce the people into accepting their sin, then God would have to do the same. But it just doesn't work that way. The words of Amos make it very clear that to accept and approve of willful transgression is to have one's worship rejected by God. So that even their most orthodox, their most orthodox ritual, their most pleasant and their finest music are a stench in his nostrils and a noise in his ears. For without a right relationship with the Lord based on his covenant based on his Messiah, the Lord most harshly denounces Israel's worship. And so the Lord warns that unless these things change, they best not look forward to the day of the Lord. And so the people are admonished to turn from wickedness and to call to him for mercy, that he might heal their land, that they might once again be a people filled to the overflowing with justice and righteousness that comes from his word. And so Jesus speaks in parable of the fate of ten maidens. At first, at first glance, they all look the same. They dress the same. They seem to be doing the same things. They are even called by the same title, with the, and they're given the same purpose, to watch for him who comes. Jesus taught that the kingdom of heaven is like ten virgins, the reading says. Ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. But five of them, in their unpreparedness, find themselves pounding on the door of heaven. But the Lord will say to them as they pound, I do not know you. And this is the key, the hinge pin, if you will, that I mentioned earlier. For to not know, not to be known by, by the Lord, according to his rules, is darkness, but to be known by him is to live in his grace. To be known by God is to abide in his word, to repent transgressing of his commandments. To be known by God is to trust in his mercy, to trust that he does in fact forgive. To be known by God the Father through Jesus his Son is light. For on the darkest day of all of history, the earth shook like never before, and darkness covered all the land. For all the darkness of all the sin of all the people of all times and of all places was laid upon Jesus. But as he breathed his last, the light of God's mercy shined in the darkness as his only begotten son cried out from the cross, Father, forgive them. And so for you who believe in Jesus and for those who will believe in Jesus, that day of which the disciples asked, what will be the sign of the end of the age? The sign of the end of the age is an empty cross. The sign of the end of the age is an empty tomb. The sign of the end of the age is the Son of God coming in the clouds with all of his heavenly hosts in all of his heavenly glory, as Paul points out. The Lord tells us in our epistle reading today that that <clears throat> that that same day that is darkness and judgment for those who continue to do evil will be a day of the trumpet call of God. It will be a day of God's cry of command. I in jest said uh, in Bible class that command will be charge and it will be a day of the voice of the archangel. For those whose trust has been and will be in the Lord Jesus that day will be the day when those who have died in Christ will be raised imperishable. That day will be a joyous day for those who have endured to the end. For on that day, the darkness of evil will be forever locked outside. While all the prepared, all that do the will of the Father, all who believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. These are they whom Jesus, of whom Jesus speaks in parable of being the five virgins 
who are prepared as they wait, as they wait for the bridegroom. These are the faithful among the church on earth. Every Christian, well, early Christians expected the return of, um, of Christ in their generation. But even as Jesus was still among them, having not yet ascended to heaven, Jesus encouraged believers to not lose hope, but to rather be prepared, be ready. For though it might take longer than we expect, and it seems that it, it does, when Christ does finally come, he will come suddenly. And those who are known by him will be with him forever. But perhaps you're wondering, perhaps some of you are wondering, am I prepared? How do I know? How do I know that I am known by God? How do I know if I even have a lamp that needs to be filled? And can I know for sure that I won't be left outside the door? My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in holy baptism, you have received Christ who is the light of the world. He who is the light of the world dwells in you and he dwells with you. You are that lamp. You are that lamp of which he speaks. These things are the reason the church gives a lighted candle at one's baptism. These things are the reason that we say when one is baptized, live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom that has no end. And then we present the baptized with a, a birthday candle because now you have two birthdays. And so these things beg the question, if I am the lamp of which Jesus speaks, how do I keep my lamp filled? And how do I keep my lamp, my light burning? Well, we talked about it with the kids. Uh, you're doing it right now. Do you remember those, those day, the days well, when you'd go to the gas station and, and someone would come out and they would put gas in your car for you? Do you remember those old gas pumps that they used to use? Not, not the old, old ones that have the great big glass bowl, but the ones probably late 60s and through the 70s. The pumps that every time the dollar amount would come around, it would go ding. You remember those? I remember sitting in the back of my dad's station wagon, just a little kid, um, at the gas station was 32 cents a gallon for ethyl. I remember my dad complaining at the attendant, 32 cents a gallon, fill her up with ethyl. And I remember sitting in the back here and ding, ding. And as the, as the gas pump was dinging, that freed up the attendant to do other things. Wash the windshield, he offered to check the oil. I remember my dad saying, no, I checked that myself, we're good. But he washed the windows, he offered it. And I, I, I'm still amazed at how quickly and how well they washed the windows. Um, but as he worked, he could hear ding. And that ding freed him up to do those things, but he also knew when the tank was full. Through faith in Jesus who died on a cross and rose from the dead, you have been set free from sin. You have been set free. You don't have to worry about that. He has taken care of that for you. You have been set free from sin. Um, maybe it's washing windshields. Maybe it's doing other things. But you don't have to lament about your future. For in Jesus, the door is open to you. He has set you free. That your light might shine before others. That they may see your good deeds and give glory to God who is in heaven. Today you've heard God's word. You've heard his word proclaimed to you and for you. Ding. You've heard God's forgiveness proclaimed to you. Ding. That thing, whatever it is that you failed at, he's given you a second try. A do-over. Ding. In a few moments, we will share the body and blood of our Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Ding. And your tank is full. These are the things that fill your tank to overflowing. For in these things, for the sake of Jesus who died and rose again, you are filled to overflowing with God's mercy and his forgiveness. For as the psalmist has written, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. 
Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ding! Your tank is filled to overflowing. So until the day that Jesus returns, let us watch and let us wait with joy. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we remain standing, let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you are our help and our deliverer. We bring you the prayers of your people, asking you to grant us all things needful and guard us against all things harmful. Lord of the church, guard your people from falsehood Grant that what we do in worship and prayer and in our daily lives may proclaim Jesus as Lord and that salvation is in him alone. Lord, in your mercy, creator of the family, bless parents and those who teach children that your ways may be known, that generations to come may know and love your promises, walk in your truth and dwell in your house. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of the nations, you despise corruption and command justice. Embolden our, ruler, our rulers to enact and defend measures that provide truth and justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, compassionate healer, as we await your son's coming in glory, we call out to you for those who suffer, and we set their names before you, asking for your help. So, Lord, this day we lay before you the names of Mark, Karen, Joyce, Chad, Lewis, Charles, Karen, Art, Wyatt, Mary Lou, Dolores, Vicki, Ezra, Stacy, and Stan. And, Lord, those coping with cancer, again, we ask you to provide a cure for this terrible disease. We ask you to provide healing and relief from pain and sickness to Kathy, Ken, Jennifer, Monique, Mike, Laura, Becky, Janine, Dawn, Troy, Sharon, Tricia, Mike, and David. Lord, we ask you to strengthen these with healing. We ask you to comfort them and keep them in hope. Lord, in your mercy, creator and sustainer of all things, as the days grow short and the air cools, we are reminded of your provision of daily bread. 
And we thank you for the gift of work. And we ask you to bless the work of our hands in every God-pleasing vocation. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, your Christ has died and is risen. And so the kingdom of heaven is open to all believers. Preserve us in faith and loving service until the day he returns. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we remain standing, we present our offerings to the Lord as we sing together the words of the offertory. We continue our worship with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times <clears throat> and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do, in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament to my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We share God's peace with one another. We continue our worship with our closing hymn.
Good morning. To keep everybody informed about our search for a DC in intern, uh, we've been notified by Seward that uh, they do not have a fit for us uh, for this first time coming up in January, uh, but she will keep us in her thoughts. Uh, Amy Huback that was here um, and possibly find a fit for us for this summer. Finally, moment we've all been waiting for, Thanksgiving dinner. Um, all are welcome. Everybody, please stay. Um, it is to benefit adopt a chaplain, so you are all definitely welcome. So with that, would you join me with common table prayer? Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Thank you. And now as you go out, I thank you for worshiping this morning. I wish you God's richest blessings on the rest of your day and on your week. Thank you. watching the live broadcast of the worship service of Peace Lutheran Church in McCook, Nebraska. We pray that this service has been a blessing to you. We invite you to join us next week, either in person or on the streaming. Peace is a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate. We are located at 411 East 6th Street. We have worship service at 8 o'clock and 1030 each Sunday morning. During the Advent and Lent season, we have special Wednesday services which begin at 11 o'clock a.m. and 7.30 p.m. You can support this ministry of peace most of all by your prayers. However, if you wish to provide financial support, contributions can be sent in care of Peace Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 240, McCook. If you have any comments or questions concerning this broadcast, or the Ministry of Peace, you can contact us in one of the following ways. Our phone number is 308-345-2595. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 240 McCook. Our email is office at plcmccook.org. Our website is www.plcmccook.org. May the Almighty God richly bless you throughout this coming week.